and welcome to another TRF podcast, tracking the British and Irish Lions as they search for a series win down in Australia this summer. I'm Tom Davis, and in this streamlined edition today, I'm joined on the bench by Robert Rudge and Ian Miles, who will be discussing the 60-point mauling of the force, the Keen Healy predicament, as well as looking ahead to Saturday's clash with the Reds in Brisbane as we ponder just what to do with Quay Cooper. So, to kick us straight off, um, an understrength Western force blown away in Perth. Ian, what did you make of this glorified training run? It was, good. It was a good run out. I mean, there was, wasn't much things that went wrong in attack. Defensively, there was a sl- couple of issues, but nothing that good hard training can't solve. But otherwise, I, I was impressed. I mean, most of the players, most of the combos, especially a few that haven't played together, either if at all, not very mu- much. They all seem to gel well. I think on the whole, there's a lot to be like, lots to be pleased about. Yeah, I watched. You know, I, I managed to get hold of a game very late last night and managed to watch the full 80 uh, through uh, Fox Sports' uh, generous contribution. And it was quite oh, interesting. Available. Sorry? Other networks are available. Yes, I know others are available, but uh, Sky was limited at the time. Um, it was quite interesting to see, uh, listen to the Aussies' point of view uh, last night um, to the game and they were very very um, impressed with, with the Lions and uh, I have to admit that I thought the performance was very clinical <clears throat> um, in particular you know look at you know I'll start off with Lee Harpenny that man's boot was sensational you know where he kicked nine nine conversions and two penalties which was just outstanding um, I also thought that the halfbacks they like, yes, they were, were very good in Murray and Sexton I thought Sexton in particular really really controlled the game um, and then you look at just outside Sexton, he had Tulagi and Bod and those boys, you know, those two look like, you know, they play regular club and international rugby together. They just played off each other. And uh, possibly the co- my favourite combination of Roberts and Bod is possibly in doubt. Uh, if you look at, if you just take it on yesterday's game, you know, up front, there's, I wasn't so impressed with the front row. Um, I was a little bit disappointed with uh, Rory Best at times yesterday. Um you know, it wasn't as good as what I was hoping, but, you know, considering he hasn't had as much time to gel in, you know, and I thought the second rows weren't as good as they normally were, either, you know, in Wynn Jones and Evans, so, you know, there's a little bit of work to do there, I thought. Yeah, I think the the back's definitely impressed, and uh, as you say, the centre combination went well, uh, but yeah, the, the, the forwards, the, the type five were a bit undercooked, I think, uh, like you said, Rory Best, he looks like he's overthrown his way out of selection already because you know there's there's only so many games before the first test and yeah I was a bit underwhelmed by Ian Evans and Alan Wynn to be honest um, I don't know where they go from there um, I think the bench the, what particularly kind of stood out for me was the way the bench kind of contributed because I'm just looking at, the bench, looking at the bench now everybody on that bench probably apart from Maitland made a contribution when they came on. Um, Young's had a decent shift. Vuna Perla, when he came on early for Healy, was uh, was very, very good in the loose, uh, dominant in the loose. Uh, even even the much line Matt Stevens had a decent shift when he came on. Uh, Parling scored a try, which, considering how Evans and William Jones were slightly, I suppose, anonymous, was is a good sign. Uh, Fallas was good. Young's was good. Farrell looked like he had a bit of his confidence back. As soon as he scored that try, I can say to myself, he's like, that is what he needs. He Scoring a try after his dodgy game against the Barbars was better. Um, yeah, Maitland was a bit anonymous again, so he needs a big performance next time he's, he pulls on the shirt. Well, I mean, does, is that it for Maitland? Because he's had like three shots at it now. And it, was, it wasn't very long um, on Wednesday, but right. I, I don't think Gatlin's going to rule him out necessarily straight away. I think, you know, You'll give players chances. I think that's what Warren always has been done. You know, when players for Wales haven't played particularly well, he has stepped in and said, right, give you, I'll give you another go, give you another chance to prove it. And I think, you know, he'll have his set wingers eventually, you know, for that first test. And in that midweek game, the following midweek game, or the Wednesday before that first test, you might, you'll probably see Maitland again on the wing to give him a chance, you know, to prove. You know. Well, he's good. He's got three games after this Saturday. He's not involved against the Reds, but he's got three games before the first test to make his claim. Um, you've got the combined New South Wales country, which is going to be a, kind of a back to be a hundred point job, and they've got the two C15 teams. So he's I, he'll have one full game and a bench out of those three. 
to make an effort, make an impact. And the way that, say, Cuthbert and Bo already have, and North looks good, I, yeah, I think he's got to pull something out of the bag big time to get involved with the first test. Hmm, yeah. Um, well, like you say, the bench had a big impact. Uh, I think I was, I was impressed with pretty much all of them uh, when they came on. Um, if you look at the stats as well from yesterday, you know, um, the tackles made and missed, you know, Western Force made 126 tackles and missed 27. The Lions made 117 and only missed six. You know, that, that's, you know, only six out of 170, you know, what is it, 123 is, is pretty good. But, you know, I know Gatlin, the perfectionist, will not be happy with those six missed. Yeah, um, uh, 17 points conceded and two tries. It's, it's still going to be an issue in camp, isn't it? Yeah, and you look, you know, there's 50, they made 15 line breaks compared to the Western Forces one. You know, so and also what was probably what would will will uh, worry Gatlin is the penalties conceded. You know, Lions conceded, uh, conceded 14 yesterday. You know, Force only conceded nine. But that I think that's a problem with Gat. Well, so the area that Gatlin will target for the Reds game is not to concede because against the Aussies. As we saw last summer against Wales in the tight and other test matches, you give the Aussies penalties, they will kick them over. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's been a, uh, an air of contention as well uh, prior to the tour and in the last week or so in the media. They've been they've been trying to hit home that uh, conceding penalties and discipline is going to be a, a key issue. So that uh, is that going to be uh, a contributing factor to uh, get the selection? I think so, yeah. The, it's, the, I think it's going to be a case of, it might be brought down to, with two, two, say, two players, it's, okay, you gave away four penalties, you gave away three, the guy with three starting. That it could almost boil down to that, because uh, the players are so individually matched for, for kind of talent. You, you're going to look down to the, the intricacies and missed tackles or, yeah, penalties conceded. And it could, yeah, it could boil down to those to see who gets the, who gets the nod. Well, if, that's, yeah. if that's the case, Matt Stevens isn't going to get a look in right after, after the Reds, is he? Well, I think Wynne Jones' book, uh, booking, sorry, wrong sport, uh, his sin bidding um, could damage his chances. I mean, a lot of people are saying he shouldn't have been sin bidding, he was the wrong player, but to have a sin bidding as your name, especially where where the where he got where the sin bidding was in the field, yeah. would not supposed to give doubts, but it was... It's, it's a little black mark in his no, record. That, that was that was interesting. That was because you could see with his reaction how he, you know, he was just he was aghast and he took a long time to leave the pitch. I don't know whether he was just being uh, stubborn or uh, against the referee. He was, I think he was just gutted that he the sin bin. And he, he just he looked aghast and uh, I don't know whether he just it was questioning the referee. I think I think he was just he knew that 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 sin bin in was going to count against, it's going to be a black mark against him uh, in terms of selection with the management now, and I think it just, uh, he was just, he was definitely getting even a pitch. Yeah, you know, I don't think the yellow card will go against him because, that, you know, he's, he's a case of mistaken identity. I can't remember who was the guy who gave it away, was it, um, initially? Um, I think O'Driscoll was the guy who that ripped the ball away eventually. Yeah, I think yeah, it was Bard who, who who should have been targeted. Croft went in with a tackle, I think, and then it just goes infringing the break. I think that's where it was. I think that's how it went. But I can't. For me, Win Jones is somebody it, you can't not look at for for the Lions because uh, for, uh, for a test play, sorry, because he is that kind of passionate guy. And his impact against the Barbars, yes, the Barbars are uncomfortable that, but. He's a very passionate guy, and I think a guy like him, he's somebody you want either starting or coming off the bench. Now, O'Connell's had a strong showing so far, and I thought Parling was quite useful when he came on. So, it's going to be interesting. Where, you know, as, as Ian quite rightly said, will, would, would, would Gatlin mark him down? I don't think he will, but we'll see. Mm, yeah, well, um, moving back to the front row, and we said they. They looked a bit below par on Wednesday, but uh, one stand-up performer uh, through the last season and uh, on the tour so far has been Keen Healy. Um, he had a bit of an eventful first half, at least. Um, cited for an alleged bite on Brett Sheehan, the scrum half, and then was later carried off with what turned out to be ankle ligament damage. What do we think of the whole Keen Healy predicament? Ah, uh, well, 
he's a, he's a, it's a very tough tough thing. Look, I I saw again from a from the Fox Sports angle. I don't know what what the guys you know you watched it with Sky or whatever broadcasting uh, thing. But the views I saw, the angles I saw, you, you couldn't see it. You know, obviously Sheen was adamant something's gone on. You know, whether it was Marks or whatever. And, you know, at half time when uh, uh, Rod Kafer went to speak to him, he was very adamant to be bitter. So obviously, you know, that's all going to pile into the citing, you know, commissioner report and all that uh, when he gets thing. But if I, if his ligaments, if he's damaged his ligaments in his ankle, then you're looking at least four weeks out there, four to five weeks minimum. So, you know, it's, it's a sad way to see him go. But, I mean, if he has bit of shear, then there's no place for it really at all. And it's, it's a, a hefty punishment for it. Yeah, regardless, uh, regardless if he's a good player or not. Mm, uh, well, in his stead, uh, Corbusier has been called up from his base in Argentina with the England squad. Uh, Ian, what do you make of that? Um, it's it's an odd one. I mean, there's quite a few players that, are, are, well, that could be con- considered. Paul James, for example, with the Barbos, who recently played the line, so he knows their almost kind of knows their setup, and he knows a lot of the guys in their setup anyway. Um, it's, I'm not against it. I think he's a Cobbsier is a very good player. He's got a good future ahead of him. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's 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 a bit of an odd one considering the alternatives. But I'm not I'm, I'm not going to kind of get annoyed about it because I think yeah, Cobbsier fundamentally is a good prop. I, I tell you what, it, it killed Paul James's chance was the way he played against the Lions. That's that's spot on. That is, he got he got destroyed on uh, on Saturday, and that's just completely blown his chance. But before that, I think he was uh, he was the front runner for yeah. to, for, to be the first replacement. Mm, yeah, true. I just I know it was against Alan Jones, and most people get blown away by him. But Paul Paul James is renowned for for scrummaging, and he just couldn't cope. No, I know play, as playing front runner. Yeah, Myself, you can't always blame the man near himself. You know what weight's coming through as well. If you don't get any weight coming through, that does cause an issue. But you look at it, he did just have an absolute lesson from Adam. Yeah. Um, you know, I I was before the tour started, I was, I was a big Corby Sierra fan, and I wanted him to go instead of Unipola. Um And the other guy who I who I personally feel has been really hard done by is Roddy Grant. Grant Grant for. Um, for Scotland has been outstanding from all six nations and for Glasgow all season to be fair and I think if the guy who's deserving to be called up it was him yeah, I think that uh, that's a good a good point. I think I think a lot of people were kind of toting him to go. Uh, he would pretty, I think Stevens would have got his spot in most players, most people's kind of pre pre kind of t- selection squads. But he we, he'd have gone in and, and I think Stevens got went in that place. Um, but about the Kiri Healy thing, I think mean, it's only because he was playing very well up until that point, doing one well the scrum, doing one well the loose. Uh, but I think that their scrum half just had the knack of me that he was going out to deliberately cause trouble. Because he was chirping at the ref, he was deliberately shoving players unnecessarily. Not that I'd uh, say if he's bit, if he's if he, Healy's bitten him, then obviously he, he needs a bit of a bad. But I think he, I think this could easily quite be a case kind of um, the, the scrum half just kind of. Trying to make the headlines, yeah. trying to yeah, trying to rattle the lions, trying to get some kind of disharmony in the camp between the coaches and the players. If that's by kind of saying kind of this foul plays occurred, but yeah, at the end there, if he needs, if he really has bitten him, then he deserves banned. But yeah, it looks like he's going to miss a true injury anyway, and, and that's that's quite sad. Yes, it's a shame. But um, moving back to the game, the performance uh, on Wednesday uh, as a whole, um, was this uh, an improvement on? The Barbar's performance? Yes, because yes. I think the, the, well, despite it being a kind of an understrength force team, they still put in a hell of a lot more effort than the Barbar's did in, in the 80 minutes. So the, the whilst they kind of they ran out to really comprehensive winners, they had a lot more against them than the they, than the Barbar's get proved. So yeah, I think it was a better performance than it was the, the Barbar's game. Uh, I, I think it was uh, on par with the Barbar's game, to be honest. If you look at the quality um, of what was put in front of them, uh, I don't think the Western Force were that much of a challenge, to be honest, and capitulated, really. Um, whether, again, that's because the Lions' tactics were spot on um, is, is, is another thing. Um, 
I think the Reds, the game against the Reds, will be the real test for Lions. Um, but you know, it's not, it was. You know, I'm not saying it was a bad performance. I'm not saying it was terrible. It was a good performance. A lot of good, a lot of good showings, as I said earlier. So it, there's positives to take from that. I'm sure Gatlin will be quite happy what he's what, what's happened so far. Yeah, well, uh, moving, moving on, on to the Reds, Reds game on uh, Saturday, and um, we'll run through the teams quickly. Uh, the Lions, uh, we've got a back line of Hogg, Cuthbert, Tulani, Davis, Bo with Farrell and Ben Youngs at half-backs. Uh, Geffen Jenkins starts the first time on tour with Tom Youngs and Matt Stevens in the front row. Uh, Richie Gray and Jeff Carlin lock the pack with an all-Welsh back row again of Dan Lidiot, Warburton and Fowler Tau. How are we liking the makeup of that team? What stands out straight away is the the, the the front five is a bit. It's not it's not first choice by any stretch of the imagination. Jenkins hasn't played much, um, and it's going to be a big game for Tom Young actually because we best having a, a, a dodgy game. Let's say he's got a big kind of chance to make a statement for a test place. Stevens again. I, I, I don't think you could find any kind of final moment you'll go. Yeah, he should be there. I'll wear it. So he's got a big game to shut a lot of people up basically. Um, so I think that is the weakest part. Team. Otherwise, Otherwise it's a, it looks a very strong, strong team, team and uh, it's going to be a very good game. Yeah, I agree with that, to be honest. You know, where, where I feel the, the big weakness is, is Matt Stevens, really. Uh, you know, I'm not a fan, fan of him personally. Um, I just don't think he's at, as good as the scrummager as what they need out there. I think Mike Ross was, was the guy that should have gone. Um, I'm not sold on Richie Gray at the moment. I think Richie's got to have a big game. Uh, to prove um, it goes back I also said earlier from the last podcast combinations you know again uh, in the back row you've got the Welsh boys and in the half back you've got the English boys and I think when you look at the Western Force game they had little, there was little combinations on the pitch at the park at the time and I think the ha- having the half backs knew each other was, was a big bonus uh, in that last game so you know again I said earlier Gatlin's still got these combinations you know, familiar combinations, but he's also trying other guys at different places. So it will be interesting to see how Tuilagi and Davis go, personally. Yeah, I, I was going to cite that one, because that, that, you talk about combinations, that's not one that's likely to make a test team, really, is it? Um, with Farrell and Youngs, that's, it looks like the second string halfback combination. Obviously, they, they're probably going to go uh, Sexton and Mike Phillips. But trying those sort of they're not, they're not straight to them, I mean, they played together for England, and they could potentially be playing 9 and 10 for the last 20 minutes in a test against Australia. Um, the, the back row, two interesting old Welsh, um, potentially starting in, um, in Brisbane for the first test. Well, the back row is the most hotly contested spot on in the squad. I, they, there's no back row that's played so well that's had a bad game. So, for Warburton especially, he's as captain. There's a lot of people talking that like, why is he captain? If he's not even designated the start, and this is it, it's a big kind of game for him because Tipperick played well first game. Sean O'Brien had a bit of a stormer um, the other day, so it's a, it's it could be Warburton's kind of defining game on tour. Uh, I think if he has a good one, then he'll be in. But it is a, it's, it's going to be a big, big 80 minutes for him. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I look back, I look at the bench as well. There, that's something I look at, and that's a very strong bench. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of Test starters there in my eyes. You know, you know, Test, Test, first Test players. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just go through. It's, it's uh, Hibbert, Villapola, Adam Jones, uh, O'Connell, Tipperick, Murray, Sexton, North. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a big, big, big um, bench, you know, we hit bad. you know, if, if uh, Young's is not producing the goods, you know, I hit, hit bad, you know, I, I can see um, Jeff and Jenkins only having maybe 40, well, between 40 and 50 minutes tops um, before they send on Mako to, uh, to ruin lives again. And, uh, <laughs> then, of course, you'll have uh, Adam Jones, and I'm, sh- I'm sure they'll shove him on at some point. Uh, in our second half, and then of course you've got Paul O'Connell who's been outstanding all, you know, since the tour started, you know, Tipperick on the bench, and then Murray and Sexton North, you know, 
Croatia again, you know, if North comes on, where are they going to slot him on? Is he going to slot him onto the wing or are they going to slot him into the centre? Yeah, that, that is an interesting point. Well, going back to what you said about Jenkins and Vodopola, I would have thought they'd try and get Jenkins as much game time as possible, seeing as he's, he's met up later and he hasn't had as much uh, time to integrate himself, especially with Vodopola getting more game time than he would have initially expected with uh, Healy's injury. I think you've got, you've got to manage. You've got to manage Geffen's in. You know this this calf. He's, he's always got a calf issue. He's kept him out in the past. I think what Wales have done very well is manage it. So I can see the same sort of like they're going to wrap him up in cotton wool type thing. Because you know with Corbis here not arriving until Saturday, you know you don't want you want to be sort of looking after both Mako and Geffen for the Wednesday for the following Wednesday game. Do you get me? Yeah. In case you don't really want to be chucking Corbusier straight into it, if you want him to have some time to integrate himself in. So, uh, you know, he said, I understand where you're coming, Tom, but I think, you know, Geffen needs to be looked at micromanaged, to be honest. Oh, you know, that's fair enough. Um, um, well, well, as much as the Lions team, team might be a bit. bit well, I don't know, well, it's, it's definitely not first team anyway. Um, you can't really accuse the Reds of not going all out and, and doing a Western Stars. Uh, their team is from uh, Lucas Davis, Tapuai, Fanga, Morahan, uh, big news, Quake Cooper starting a fly half, uh, with the halfback pa- partner of Frisbee. Uh, in the forwards, Daly, Hansen, and Holmes, Wallace Harrison, and O'Donoghue with a back row of Quirk, Robinson and Schatz. And this is definitely a tougher proposition for the Lions. Uh, Ian, with pretty much the strongest team possible out, this is more like it from an Australian franchise. Yeah, this is the tour game. Uh, this is what this is what a tour game should be. I mean, the, the force it, they, it's their prerogative to play whatever team they want at the end of the day. But for tradition, say they should have had a stronger team. But this is more likely from a tour match. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be an absolute humdinger. I can't wait for it. It's gonna be great. It's, what's fascinating me is how Cooper, because he's not had the best of times with the uh, Aussie public and the management. So he's gonna be. There's, we know Cameron Lenz isn't pointed his way, so he's going to have the whole country looking at him on uh, Saturday. It's interesting to see how he goes, but it's, you know, I'm very excited with the team. I just can't wait for the end to go on. Yeah, I think you know, Craig Cooper is going to be the, the man to, you know, the main talking point throughout the whole of this game. Um, I mean, he's, you know, of course, he's got something to prove to uh, to Robert uh, to Deans. And I think to the Australian public, you know, he wants he probably wants to show that I'm on. I should be in this Aussie Test squad. You know, I, I, I am the guy. I am I am number ten. Uh, you know, it, it is a very tough tough team. The guy, you know, Bill Robinson will give uh, the, uh, the Lions back row a tough time. And I mean, you know, uh, Morahan's not not a guy to mess with either on that wing. And you know, and so is Rod Davis. You know, Tapper is a solid tackler. So you know. It's a good side, yeah. It's a good chance that you know if they don't if they don't perform the Lions and let you know let the penalty count build up, this Queensland red side will hit them hard. Yes, well, like you mentioned, the back row, the, the Cook and Robinson, they they built the same kind of stuff as uh, Higginbotham, really. Um, and it's going to be a tight affair, obviously. Um, looking at the the red bench, it's strong as well. So it's going to be a struggle for I think, for the Lions. Yeah, yeah, I can see it. But if if they play as well as they've done so far, then they should be fine and should be okay. Okay. Um, well, moving back to Clay Cooper uh, for a bit. Um, obviously, yeah, it's a big talking point. His selection is this his trial match to squeeze his way into the final Australian squad for the Test series. Or do you think Dingo Deans has already made his mind up? I can't see Deans not not consider not consider uh, Cooper. I mean, I find it pretty hard that, that that he's not looking at it. I wonder if dropping him is a psychological game to make Quay Cooper think, right, I'm going to prove him wrong, and I'm going to prove that I should be there. So it'll be interesting to see what what what, what Quay Cooper turns up on Saturday. 
Yeah, it, it, that is the, the point. It, it's it's how Cooper has just took, taken his dropping. Has he kind of gone into a sort of a bit, or will he come out of Saturday? Kind of going right off show you all and just pull and pull a good performance out. It's but yeah, I think this is his kind of this is his trial. If he has a bad game, then he's not gonna have a chance with the squad. But yeah, I, I don't think Dean, I don't think any international coach, unless they have kind of one star and then kind of B players as uh, fly off. But with Australia, they're kind of they're all good in their own way. Uh, so I think Dean's won't have made his mind up because he wants to keep all options open. So. Cooper's got a, he's got a chance as good a chance as anybody getting that first test jersey to start. Um, so I think, but I think this is his game to do it. Yeah, they're not exactly blessed um, with fly halves. I mean, the other option would be to start James O'Connor, and obviously he's been asking uh, the Rebels to play him there, give him as much time as possible in the ten jerseys, just to, just to give him the experience. Um, I think, you know, for Dean, I think he's down if he does, down if he, do, if he doesn't really, I mean, if if he doesn't pick him, because of all his, you know, exploits previously, um, and then the Aust- Australia go and, and flop with uh, no spark in the back line, and then the Australian public are going to be on his back. But saying that, it, watching him against the Rebels uh, last weekend, uh, yeah, he scored a try and whatnot, but he, he was missing kicks left, right and centre, Two charge downs that cost them tries. If if, if he chucks him in a ten and he has another meltdown, then they're, they're going to equally be uh, uh, asking for his head. Yeah, he, things can't win this week. He can win or he could very badly lose. Yeah, you know, if he has a good game, he's going to be. Um, well, even before the game, if he, if he, he I think no matter how how Cooper plays, and there's always going to be parts of the Australian public that are going to be not what not going to forgive Cooper for what happened. So I think he could even before the game starts, he's going to be if he picks him, he's going to always oh, pander to opinion and all that. So yeah, I don't envy James in this case. He's got a bit of a bit of a job on his hands because I think whatever decision he made, he's going to be verified by some part some portions of the fans and media. Yeah, it's interesting stuff. Well, um, Rob, I'm gonna I'm gonna come to you now. We're gonna go again like we did last podcast. Uh, um, score prediction and man of the match, please. Oh, let's think. I think the Lions will nick this one. Again, I'm probably gonna go down the the route of uh, 32-25. And um, man of the match, probably, possibly. Uh, Manu Tulagi. And Ian? Um, I reckon it's going to be 29 20 to the Lions. I think man of the match is going to be Dan Lidiot. Interesting stuff. Well, seeing as I was closest last time, I, if people remember, recall, I called a 65 17 victory with the Lions, which was only four points out. I mean, that's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to say the Lions are going to win 39-22 on Saturday and Captain Fantastic Sam Robinson is going to be named man of the match. interesting stuff well as it was Rob Stark at the Red Wedding our time has come and the final whistle on this podcast has blown my thanks to Rob and Ian for their thoughts and musings today for extra build up to the weekend's game go to the rugbyforum.com which also provides up-to-the-minute news, views, and more rugby banter and sledging than Brett Sheehan could shake a stick at. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next time. The music used in this podcast is taken from the planets by Gustav Holst and recorded by the United States Air Force Heritage of America Band.